in, in the vertical domains and also the horizontal domain. And the uh, data classification, institutions should think about their data. What are data of the institution have low risk, medium risk, or high risk? And based on that, you can make a decision uh, what type of cloud you want. Uh, for, for example, for high risk sensitive data, you can use private cloud. But for this low risk data, you can use any cloud that you want. You can use cloud that is the cheapest, for example. This is the best, best for you. And after all of this uh, thinking about, you can, uh, you can make a decision uh, what you want to provide to users and how to provide. In house, outsource clouds and some third way. But if you are aware every of this uh, open question, you should be uh, very, very easy to make the to bring decision about your moving in the cloud. And uh, um, if you want to use Jean Framework Agreement, in uh, European Union and countries from the European Union, there is two uh, ways. Direct allowed without public procurement, because Jean made this public procurement for, for everyone. But in the countries as Moldova, which is not part of the EU, you have to make full tender for uh, cloud services from cloud providers from the Jean Agreement. But we have all technical documentation which is available for you. Yeah, I'm right. And uh, we have general willingness of the service providers, cloud service providers, to offer you the same or a similar condition. And uh, I think this is one of the last slides. Uh, well, 15 minutes ago. <laughs> I finish. Uh, uh, according to our experience of the adoption of the uh, cloud services in Jam, right now we have 18 countries who actually use uh, Jam services. We, uh, we noticed a big gap between uh, usage of clouds between Western country and Central and East European country. Uh, Western country are on one side, but the Central and Eastern European country uh, is on the other side. Uh, Western countries is, uh, uh, use the cloud services much more than, uh, than other uh, countries in, the, in Europe. And I put a few issues why. I really don't know why I, I ask you, and I ask <laughs> so many times many people, why, is, why we have a different approach to the same things in the, in, in the Europe. Maybe without budgeting, because uh, Croatia uh, and the uh, continent where I'm from uh, is a central European country. We have any budget from the government. But many, many entrants in Western Europe are self-financing through the services and their members. And there is totally different logic between, for example, Sofrat in uh, Netherlands and the current in Croatia. We are on the guard. Uh, all, uh, all services from uh, Carnet and many countries from Central and East Europe are free for every, uh, all members. But in the Western Europe, many services are uh, financed but paid uh, by their members. I don't know is the, the main reason, but it is different. Also, Western and I have more money than other countries. Maybe it is the main reason because it is much easier when you have money to, to do something. Trust relationship. Uh, my experience from institution from Croatia, uh, we have excellent adoption of every service because they believe us and everything is free for them. But if they have to work with someone from the uh, private sector, they actually don't believe us. I don't know why. Really, <laughs> I tried to find, but I don't know. Security of data or adoption of services, which I said. Uh, also, does it uh, have some influence on politics? Just as a question. I, I don't know. And uh, what else? If someone has something there, I'm here right now after this uh, after this workshop. And uh, mm, just uh, one of the last slide. As Maria said uh, on the lightning talk, uh, Jean framework agreement for clouds is not our uh, only framework agreement. We have second framework agreement about video conference. Uh, on the EU level, we have tender uh, uh, from the giant and together, and we have just for MLN 
uh, video conferencing system uh, which is available for uh, our uh, all and then uh, which is part of the of the genre. There's the two tools and uh, you can see much information in this uh, uh, web address if you're interested in that. And uh, where do we go from here? Uh, to the second presentation, of course, but uh, as I mentioned, uh, and uh, Jan, we will start working uh, on the hybrid cloud delivery platform, of the cloud security, of the community cloud. But uh, what will be in five years from now, I really don't know if you Maria can on your presentation, <laughs> but I'm sure that what, whatever will be uh, in five years from now, it will be something in the cloud. Definitely not on premise or something like that. It will be cloudy solution. Uh, this is our uh, site. I hope that you are familiar with this site. This is the official Jan site about uh, cloud and uh, cloud technology. And our task in Jan to make sure we work uh, in the cloud. And I think that's it for me. And one hour is up. Uh, thank you very much uh, for your attention. Uh, if you have a question, uh, maybe after the uh, year, you uh, Okay. Uh, well, Jen, how it says, uh, I mean, about software. It says, uh, says, says, what uh, software is available in Jen Cloud? What software is available in Jen Cloud? No, we, we, uh, we uh, don't uh, give you uh, services and the software. We give you just the cloud platforms. And uh, that cloud platforms, you uh, you have your own software. Giant uh, uh, don't uh, work uh, with this uh, part of the project with the, uh, with the software. You work with the cloud platforms. And you can have platforms in the cloud from this, and the software is uh, your responsibility. Yeah. Right now, we don't have some uh, dedicated software. I will explain you in my presentation mm -hmm. how is it. Okay. About software? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Yes. So in GM, many members, they, they have their own cloud infrastructures. And uh, usually they do it and use it. They use their boards, external cloud infrastructures, but also the internal cloud infrastructures. In the GM, we have some common vision how to integrate these two different types of infrastructures. Uh, it and is... Uh, now, now it is a uh, part of the future uh, community cloud project. As I said, we plan to do to work with that next year, the next phase of Jean, with the community uh, clouds between uh, between different tenants. Because the tenants also recognize that as an opportunity to work together. Yes. In your presentation, you compare the clouds. Cloud with I don't know banking or e banking, uh, but uh, in different of e banking, the money has no the private information. It's money, money, but the data is private information. What do you think about how? I I agree with you definitely, but uh, I care more than <laughs> in money than, than the data. But uh, in, in Europe, we have GDPR which is the main law about uh, general protection of data. And all of these cloud service providers uh, is uh, aware about this law and they have to work uh, according to the GDPR. And because of that, I, I'm not afraid uh, of uh, protection of my data. Because if someone misuses my data in cloud, uh, he work uh, not according to law. He, is uh, that's things of the police and other uh, organization. I think it's a uh, it's matter of trust and a matter of the laws. As you give your money to the bank and you believe them, then they don't misuse your money because you, in one hand, you believe them, but the other hand, you know that the law is uh, on your side, and they see. I just think that banking recognized this uh, opportunity of clouds much before other, and because of that, they are uh, so advanced today in this this area. But I think that uh, probably many other things and uh, 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 daily living uh, uh, stuff will be go uh, in the clouds, just like in banking. But as I said, it's my definitely.
it's not scientific official. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, question. Um, despite the banking sector, can you comment on the significance of cloud storage for sensitive data in the medical sector, like personal data? Is there anything known about that? Yeah, I, um, I work uh, for a few years in the government on Croatia, and we also have many doubts about protection of data, medical data, and everything, every uh, very sensitive data. And we think about that, that we build a private government cloud for sensitive data, and we had some law which will say this kind of data is strict sensitive, and this data or must be in the border of Croatia, in the uh, property of Croatia, but all other data you can do what you want. And uh, that, that was in some time approach of the Croatia as a government. I don't know how um, other uh, countries in uh, Europe think, uh, think about that, but I think that you're definitely right. It uh, will be a very big uh, question and the issue to, res uh, to resolve think about it and Thank you. Thanks. Yes. <laughs> well, quite enough. <laughs> no, okay. Institute of Applied Physics. So uh, I'll describe the situation. In our labs, so we have uh, a wide variety of devices to gather information. So for PAAC, is there such an experience to move all lab software to cloud? And to get our just in time information. Uh, if no, does Jan's plan and I don't know, maybe separately for some projects in this case? I don't know that I will be I don't know the Jan plan. Nothing uh, in this moment about uh, about topic of any time. Yes. We 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 don't plan uh, on some detail at all. We cannot move towards to a cloud from all that. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much again. And uh, the presentation desk is yours. systematic like the Darko was, so I will skip uh, some parts and I will focus on some details which was not explained uh, uh, before. So IT becomes an integral part of our life. You can see and it was mentioned that, uh, that uh, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube and so, and so uh, they have uh, uh, every day uh, millions of accesses uh, with millions of users and everything what is stored there must be somewhere on some hardware okay so uh, people who are not technically uh, educated they don't care about that so they say okay i go into the youtube and they have everything okay so but uh, if you are technically educated you, you know that should be there some stored data and so on so the the, the same is with the e-shop. Everybody is currently doing the 
uh, in shopping. So, and for example, so I would not talk about Amazon or Alibaba, but uh, for example, in Czech Republic, it's 40,000 e shops, uh, which is selling furniture and uh, some, some uh, agricultural products and blah, blah. And all these 40,000 e shops must have their databases somewhere. And they, of course, they are using the clouds for, the, for, 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 for this business. So technical scientific computation, it's uh, running in the universities, of course, but they need the supercomputing or data storages also. So the healthcare, again, in each hospital, you have a PAX system. It's the picture of having communication we have heard in the morning. About, about this, and so there are also the many thousands of, of, of uh, uh, patients, and they have to store their data for many years. Okay, so uh, it seems to me the biggest problem of the presented examples are data volume, security, long term preservation. So, uh, because if you have a slow network, so you can be annoyed by this, but okay. If you are doing the computing, you can compute your uh, results during five minutes or 30 minutes or two days, and you always can somehow overcome the problem of the, uh, in a, if there is not enough capacity for, for computing. But if you have a data, you have to store them and you have to keep them. And this is a problem. So, how to manage this with all capacities? I think there are Dropbox, Unload, and other tools uh, which are used for the uh, personal cases, but it's not the solution for the, for the big, big systems, okay? And modern IT is not cheap. And do we have the money for the new infrastructure each five years to, uh, to recover this? And can you imagine if you have that millions of data somewhere, and if you have to convert them from one system to another, it takes an enormous uh, time. Okay? So, what is current situation in IT? So, big companies building IT factory called data centers, equip them with the different computers, connect them to internet, and start to sell the IT services. So, they offer to replace process of selling real hardware to users by selling services as their hardware. We call this cloud solution. And commercial IT world accepted this uh, technology a couple of years ago, and so this was the reason why these companies started to do the business also in this field. So if we look on these data centers, so these buildings are not the indoor parking houses or department stores, but DC with global range. The Facebook, Google, Amazon, Microsoft, Azure, they have such buildings, and not only these buildings, they have a full infrastructure. So if you look on the infrastructure of Amazon, so they have a Amazon regions, they have a West US, East US, EU, China, Asia, Pacific, South America, and inside this region, they have a availability zone. So these zones are uh, on, on the coast, uh, the, the similar buildings uh, like this are in several places in this place. They are connected extremely fast internet and they store data on three places and so on to keep the availability and the, uh, and the, the uh, security of data. And of course there is a one uh, which is not here yeah, there is a government cloud, okay? So even the US government is using AWS. So not, not every, you can, if you are a user after that, you can select what you want, but if you want to run governmental uh, application, you have to go to government cloud, which is a special, which is a special, that's right. Okay, so, sorry, oh, I pressed the wrong. So in the same is the Microsoft. Microsoft has all over the world many, many sites which are uh, connected with Microsoft network. And there are some points which they call the edge node, which access this Microsoft network into the 
NREM or the business, business network in, in, in the country. And again, you can see the examples, example of the, of the micro Azure the, the facilities. Uh, okay, so it, it, it was mentioned by the record. So it's the small retrospective. The couple of years in the era of mainframes, 70 to 90 last century, we had the one mainframe computer somewhere and all application was running in this and the user's the final user was sitting somewhere in the in the next 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 room to the this computer and they can run and their, their jobs there or they had uh, some link uh, to to the to this uh, system after the distribution so that everybody was running on pc after that the vm care or linux servers came and so you can run as a cluster and you have uh, so many application how many uh, pcs you had or uh, linux machines you had in, in the cluster and then the vm vm there came, so you can do the virtualization and you can multiply number of machines and that, that every user had own application on home uh, on own uh, virtual machine. So um, currently the position of the final user is that he can select what he want, okay? So it depends on, 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 on the uh, people who are working for the final user, so they, they can run in the uh, uh, on the virtualization platform which is the local uh, or you can use the global cloud or you can use the grid or cloud uh, in the country uh, in frame of the uh, NRM for example okay <coughs> so what is typical for cloud solution cloud is running 24 hours a day seven days a week it's self-service there is always some type of input portal where user can find the catalog of provided services and all services are running independently in individual VM. Services are monitored, built to each user individually. So this is my, my characterization of cloud solution. So, of course, there is some advantages and disadvantages. So, <coughs> In the simplest cloud solution is the simple replacement of local hardware. So instead of the building own or using own hardware, so we are using hardware which is located somewhere. <coughs> we are talking about IIS, infrastructure service. You don't care about hardware, energy, air conditioning, and so it was mentioned in, in the speech <coughs> speech. And there is a one foreign element which is involved in this uh, processing. And uh, you have to believe them and trust them as you believe to your people in your computing center. Okay? So this is this is condition. And uh, of course you need uh, high speed communication between your side and the cloud. So this is another point which is necessary for uh, effectively running the clouds. So the big vendors offer a wide spectrum of services. This is the this is what, what the Microsoft offer. And this is what what the Amazon offer. But if we are talking about this uh, framework of the Jean, so we are talking about just elastic computing and the uh, data storages. Okay? Then the rest one is not touched in this framework, but you can use it if you have the money, of course. Okay? So it, it's the time. <coughs> and, sorry, taking it back. Oh. I have to, sorry. I'm pressing the wrong button. Okay. Okay, and this is the one important uh, uh, picture which I want to explain, which explain all these uh, differences between the between the different uh, models of the uh, services. So on the left side is the is the cloud vendor or the provider of. They can offer any type of services as I uh, I, I saw. So from from the IIS that means the hardware through the 
PAS to SAS. So <clears throat> it was the mention, uh, the typical uh, case of of the SAS is the Office 365. Maybe somebody of you are using it. So it's the application which user are using without touching, without that knowing of this. So he is connected as a and final user is connected to Office 365 and, and running Office 365. Or you are running on the Gmail. Again, you, you, you are not knowing about this, you are just running on the Gmail. Uh, on your, on your PC. So, if you decided to uh, replace your hardware, so the hardware gives you the uh, data center, ABS or Microsoft and so, and the rest is up to you. So, you are creating your virtual machines on this hardware, and you are running everything on it as your type of application. Or you can use the other companies which are prepared specialized solution for you, for medicine or for physics or so on. So they, 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 they prepare it, they prepare uh, this and the application is running against the final user. Okay? Or you can buy it from the original original provider of that. Uh, you can run all this type of software if you want. Okay. <coughs> so uh, okay, it's, it, uh, let's go down. A uh, lot is interesting on, job, on, on the cloud, so final user doesn't care about the technical solution and uh, the cloud technology is not just a matter of IT specialists. And uh, the important is the really role of code architect. Who are the people who are wide spectrum of IT knowledge, including networking, why? <coughs> so cloud architect is the only person who has to log in into cloud portal. Okay, and he worked with the cloud portal, uh, which is the, the, uh, the dashboard, which contains some menu panels of function and so on, and he has to know how to manage these uh, things. And he created a new virtual machine, new virtual networks, define how many CPU memory, disk network, and so on is needed for each virtual machine, how these virtual machines are connected, what is the security between them, what is the security between cloud and the final user and so on and so on, and uh, allocate user and security policy. And if it's finished, the user are able to start using new hardware to the And now we can discuss a little bit more about the moving to the university or the Institute of Academy and so on to the uh, infrastructure clouds. Uh, there are universities which have centralized services in own computing uh, facilities with own staff and they maintain all IT infrastructure. Servers for mail, name server, web facilities, database server, cluster of computers used for APC and so on. And uh, there is of course the, a, another extreme which is represented usually by the university which is uh, University of Art or the University of, uh, I don't know, uh, History and blah blah blah, which have no own stuff and they, which are fully outsourced, which use the fully outsourced services. They are using mail on Gmail, web on local commercial DC, or REST services is used from and then and so on. In that, in that case, they can easily go to any type of services like the clouds from the giant and so on. For the, these people who have really the infrastructure, it's, uh, it's, uh, they are very often on the big universities, on technical universities and so on. It's very complex uh, connecting many computers with the same technology used in the internet. They were built incrementally by the long time. 
it invests a lot of money into it, and uh, they often work without a detailed documentation, and uh, they are maintained by several gurus, okay, in, in the universities. And so, uh, so what we can do, so we can do, we can create a similar IT infrastructure or part of it in the clouds, in independently on, on what we are doing now and what the currently users are using, okay? So, <coughs> We don't need extra investments, no wiring. All is possible done programmatically, where line commands keep on clicking. Do it by the cloud architect, I said. And uh, final user, can we absolutely attach him to it? So is the question of the IT specialist. And uh, final user can be involved in this problem when everything is ready. And the one day he can just say, okay, we are going from this type into another type. You will see new type of login to your application, and that's it. And the rest can be absolutely the same. Uh, so what was the important facts about the university? It was, again, I am repeating a little bit what uh, Darko said. So you have the students, okay? Is that Small universities there are several, a couple of thousand students, and big universities are like 25 or 50,000 of students. And students need access to their university resources. Which resources do the university offer them? So, of course, the internet, mail, information databases, computation facility, licensing software, and so, and so on. And so now we should think uh, what, how the students are really using the services. Do they have own uh, notebook or they uh, go into the, some labs where they have, uh, let's say, 50, 50 machines and they share them and so on? Because it depends how many, how many licenses you need, for example, for, for Microsoft and so on, okay? So, because it's, 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 it depends. And uh, of course, uh, the second, and the second is the teachers and researchers, usually 100 uh, people using the same resources like students. And they are doing the, another type of work. They create fundamental pedagogical content, lectures and so on, which are located somewhere on the web or in the learning system. Okay? And of course, uh, they are involved in the uh, process, which is uh, uh, administrating uh, uh, agenda, I don't know how here, but evidence of student results is every, every teacher has to uh, do the uh, evaluation of students in this system. Every student has a, a, uh, access to this, uh, uh, to this system to see how uh, he has succeeded or not succeeded. So it's instead of the index of the students, we have the automatic electronic index. So, and of course there is a management staff which is the running economical tools for managing a company. So if you go, if you want to go to the clouds, so you should really think uh, what part of your university activities you will convert to the clouds, you know. So, and uh, conclusion to this, there are almost many ways how to transfer agenda application to the clouds. Its situation is different according to the complexity and the size of the university. Uh, process need data analysis from technical, financial, security aspects. And uh, adoption is always so complex that cannot be left on the department but always must be accepted as strategic decision of university management. And so the total conclusion is that the basic question about cloud adoption is not if, but what, how, and where. Okay, so this is uh, my uh, part, first part of the presentation. And so, if you have a question to that, so I will be happy to answer it. After that, in the second part, I will go into that real technical detail: how to get into the cloud, how the cloud uh, 
<coughs> manager is working and so on and so on. You are, you are tired, I think. <laughs> Too much clouds. Okay, please start with the uh, other Okay. Review experiences with the several calls from Jan Framework. So I start to play a little bit with these. Uh, with these clouds which were offered in front in front of this or in front of this. So what's the goal of this presentation to show implementation step link with the process working in the cloud, describe different levels of users, role of IT architecture administrator, show several basic technical details, a help with decision which <coughs> provider or cloud is best for my your solution, respecting company, IT culture, style and, and tradition. Okay? So, uh, maybe we, you, you uh, visited the, the web pages which is uh, on the, on the Jean Cloud. So, they offer many of providers of services, but frankly said, they provide only three group of the clouds. The one is the which uh, offer the IIS on all hardware infrastructure. So these companies, are, they have all data centers and they offer only IIS on it. Okay? The other one, the, the other uh, companies, offer the Amazon AES or the Microsoft AES. Okay? So you have uh, many, you have many, many, many providers or resellers, Microsoft Azure, or resellers Amazon, okay? And these usually offer only, uh, only own infrastructure. So we, we have seen this picture, so we have seen this picture, so I just skip it. How to become a cloud user? So go into the particular company. I mean, if you select the Microsoft, go into the HTTPS, Azure, Microsoft, com, or the AVS, uh, or the Cloud Sigma, or whatever, okay? And uh, log in as a, as a user. So you can, you can easily get the private user account if you have a credit card. Or you have to be somehow involved in this framework that means that your institute must sign contract with the particular uh, company. But uh, the simplest way is to have a credit card or the company credit card or your private company or your private credit card and start to use the, uh, use these services for testing, okay? It not cost too much, I'll show you later. Uh, so, uh, I skip into this. So this is a uh, portal of Microsoft Azure, okay, and they offer some type uh, continue free accounting sign up, okay. So you can continue for free account and give you, they give you 200, 200 US dollars and you can use the account at 200 dollars for testing, okay, and when you ex uh, uh, use it, so you, you have to, uh, create a real real account. Okay. So you you will get something like this. You can see my my uh, address, email address, the uh, uh, password. Okay, so and, and 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 go go on. Okay. So after that you you will get this dashboard. So now I am working as a level one user, that means that level one is account, uh, according to me the cloud architect, okay? So I have a, a, the, the dashboard from which I can create all what I've said. That I can create virtual machine, I can create virtual network, I can create everything, the user policy and so on. 
And so the similar way is that if you go on the Amazon Web Services, you will get this one, again, the, the password you will get in, and you, or, or this is the Cloud Sigma IIS, which is uh, the third, uh, third uh, type of groups. And uh, for example, if you are on Amazon, so I have, uh, <coughs> I created a virtual machine, uh, so I can uh, I can see you can see that I have uh, three virtual machines one one is running two are stopped and I have some some buttons there which uh, which gives me the possibility to 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 do actions with the selected with selected uh, uh, virtual machine. Uh, it, it is the same, this is example called Sigma. I prefer the colors uh, to see what is same AWS, what is called Sigma, is the, is the airport control panel. So you can create, uh, you can define what you want, okay? So, uh, so resource allocation. So I said that you can define what you want. So you define a storage, how big how big data you will need, what type of uh, uh, storage it, it, it would be. You will uh, create a virtual machine, you will select how many CPU you want to in the machine, how much memory, if it's Linux or Microsoft system, and of course you will create also the uh, network. And so the, there is a link, which is a multifunction entity, and you can create some security groups, some subnets, and so on. So you should be the, also specialist for the, for the network if you are, want to work as a cloud architect. Uh, as I said, network is an important part of the cloud infrastructure, so IP addressing, you are select if you want to use the private IP, public IP, dynamic, or DHSP style, if you want to public IP sta static, so in that case you usually have to pay more than for the other ones. And so example on Cloud Sigma, uh, because the Cloud Sigma is the Swiss company, so you have to pay two uh, uh, Swiss francs per public static address more, okay. You define the policies and uh, it depends uh, uh, what type of uh, storage you are using and so on. <coughs> uh, of course, sometimes you need a more complex infrastructure. So if you want to run it as a, for one person or for computation, so you can easily select uh, independent uh, virtual machines and you can run it on uh, virtual machines but if you want to uh, run uh, some powerful uh, infrastructure which needs the which needs the uh, more communication or application servers so you you will have a one public address which would go into some called the external load balancer, and the load balancer can balance the, uh, your uh, request from, from, from the internet to three application servers, for example. Okay? So you can define uh, the rules according, they will separate the traffic to three application servers. And you, you, you can even go farther, so you can have, uh, again, some web services which go on the port 80, and you have the load balancer here, which go into the three independent virtual machine, and the three machines are using the uh, databases, which can be critical point, and again, you can use the databases of three or more servers, and you can use some internal load balancer which gives you the chance to distribute the load into the different different servers. Uh, so uh, what power I will need, okay? So for example Amazon they offered the 
a couple of uh, couple of the type of uh, machines. They general patterns compute uh, compute optimized. That means they have a stronger processors, faster processor, or memory optimized, or storage optimized, or accelerated computing, which which uh, you can use uh, all these uh, facility. And of course, you have to pay for that. So you can you can uh, you can select if you will use on-demand instances, so or you will demand uh, the reserve instances or schedule instances or spot instances, which are uh, or dedicated or dedicated hosts. So it depends what uh, you really need. So. Uh, <coughs> The cost is different, of course. The, 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 for example, the spot instances mean that you will use unused instances. It will be very cheap for you, but you will not sure that you always get this, uh, the, this uh, instances in the moment when you want. Okay. <coughs> schedule uh, the same. The schedule instances you will you will know that uh, you, your traffic is going up in some periods, so let's say the Friday afternoon. So you will schedule your instances on the Friday afternoon, after that you can get another price then if you will use the on-demand instances which are, or reserved instances which are very, very expensive or dedicated host, because it always will run on the same host. Yeah, so I have this uh, a little bit. Uh, yeah, so this is uh, uh, again the Amazon infrastructure and these ABS regions and uh, availability zone. So I just show you that this availability zone has, uh, for example, three or four sites which are storing data uh, safely. And uh, on this on this uh, board, you have a technology instance which you select, okay, somehow. Ah. So and this is the process how you will select the instances, uh, what type of virtual machine you want. You have a long list of instances. It could be hundred or more instances which is available, and you just select one of them which is uh, the uh, reasonable. So I usually select that the cheapest one. <coughs> and after that, you will ask, you will be asked for keys into which uh, uh, you will access the real instance. So currently you are still in the, in the, in the dashboard and on the web. But in the moment when you will you want to go into the real uh, virtual machine which you created, so after that you will go there via SSH, and you will uh, need the uh, SSH keys. So you can you can select if you are familiar with and you are using SSH, so you can use your keys which are normally using for other accesses, or you can select you can uh, you can choose. Uh, this existing part, or you can create the, your your uh, special keys uh, which are created uh, for the for this type of application. Uh, and again, there is an important button which is the launch instance. So you select the instance. You before you define it uh, how big this instance should be, and after that, the launch instances. After that, you will get what you have seen before. So uh, this is the continuation of the long, long, long line, which is uh, showing you how your virtual machine is uh, going up. So you will see that it's the loaded, and uh, after that is the, is, the, is the green one that is running. So in the moment, you can use the, your, your keys and access it. <coughs> So we have seen this again. So there are, there are a few other information which are important. Of course, you can see the 
security group which you select, in which you define, define your rules for the security. And uh, you can see your IP address, so you, after that you can access this IP address which you created on this machine. Uh, uh, so if your architect, if your cloud architect is the same person who is defining the all accesses at home institute, so they have absolutely same rights, even more rights in the cloud like they have in the normal life in the hardware which they have available. Okay? So if we are talking about the security, so the security is more or less same like the security was established uh, in your current hardware or in your current system. Because they, they have all uh, commands how to set up this security. Uh, <coughs> so this is uh, the similar uh, process how uh, dashboard management is used in the Cloud Sigma. There's five steps. So first of all, they, they have a, I must say that every dashboard in this cloud is different, okay? So you should know how to, how to manage this. And the terminology is also different, so you have to know what, what is going on, okay? So they select uh, some type of machine. After that, they select uh, uh, how many, how many, uh, how many sites, uh, how many uh, CPU you want to use? After that, you select the keys, and after that, select the, the select the, I cannot see it very well, so it's sorry for that. <coughs> and and the final is the create machine, and again you can see the. Uh, it's kind of and you can see the IP address and uh, it's running. Not, they are not using the, the green cars and points, they are running and so on. Okay. And you can see what type of uh, machines you use, the how many CPUs you have, the, it's Intel, how many RAM you have, and uh, at, at drivers of disk, you can see and so on. So, and uh, the security group, again, there is a, a possibility to set up the ports and the uh, IP addresses which the ports would be open for, or you can, uh, you can uh, totally block, and so, for example, you can open the port 80 or the 443 for mail uh, or you know, for HTTPS, and uh, SSH is at 22, okay? So it depends on how your manager will create this machine and it's valid for inbound or outbound. So you can really possibility to define what, what you want. <coughs> SSH key, which are using also here in the inside. And, uh, in Azure, it's again a little bit uh, different, uh, different definition. So again, you set up the inboard and outboard traffic, and you define the port, uh, port uh, 80, any protocol, and allow or disallow. So sorry, this is in check. So if you are accessing this port, so usually they recognize if you are who you are and what type of the language you are using. So after that, you have a dashboard in the, in the national language. So sorry for that. Um, clouds offer a complex user management. So there are roles. For example, Microsoft Azure using the so, so called the RBAC, the role based access control. So they are usually recognized the owner, contributor, or the reader. Okay, and the same or similar situation is Amazon role-based access control position. So you can you can define the role, you can define for what subject, what session, what permission you have, operation, and so on. So it could be quite difficult to set up, but uh, very safe safe style of the definition 
uh, user management that not every user who will access this cloud would have the same rules. Okay, so now we finally, so before all before this was the just running on the web, on the portal of the clouds, and now you are in the moment when you have to use you want to access the, your virtual machine, which is created somewhere in the cloud. And as I said, you are using uh, or the Linux machine or the PC, and you use Putty or the SSH, and you can easily access the uh, virtual machine from, from this type of this type of machine, uh, as shown here in the black box. How to prepare, for example, uh, this Putin? So you select the uh, IP address of your cloud on a port. You can select your your keys and uh, put them into store them into the into the SS, uh, SSH. Okay, and after that you just open communication with the with the uh, VM and in that moment I am talking about level 2 user okay so level 1 user was the architect who created virtual machine or infrastructure for you level 2 user can be anybody who cloud architect will define that would be the responsible for running this machine okay so we, we can call that would be the root, Ubuntu, sudo, and so on, so they can run everything like he would buy the new machine and start to use it at home on, on his table, okay? <clears throat> so and after that, he will log in and uh, into the system, and you can see uh, how <coughs> disk DF or uh, he, can, uh, he can select, he can start the Apache as a as a web server on the machine and so on. Uh, so I used, for example, the Moodle as testing application for these clouds. Why Moodle? Because seems me it was the it's the e-learning system which is used in many schools and universities. Uh, Why they spread over the world and uh, it has a uh, feature which is quite complex system because they use the all users inside. They use the, the database and they use the, 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 the web, of course. So you, as a level two user, as a, as a root of, the, of this new virtual machine, you have to install MySQL, you must install Apache, you have to PHP, uh, PHP and you have to install also the Moodle as a, as a software which you want to use inside the machine, okay? And, uh, and uh, so you are doing like this, just define a configure mural inside, and after that you are level 3 user, as a level 3 user, that means the student or teacher or somebody who want to use this Moodle will log in into the application, which is the Moodle testing on IVS, okay? And usually, again, it's, uh, it's the administ administrator of this user as a first who, who should ac access this. And after that, he gives inside the application another rules how the uh, other users, students, teachers, and so will use this, this, this type of application. Uh, so, okay, so this is just uh, how I created some trivial the learning system T3 model for text from Sigma okay. and this is again uh, something which is not so uh, there is another part which is the S3, S3 storage in, inside of Amazon so the Amazon I just want to show you what, what they offer they offer you the uh, objects is the object oriented storage uh, which uh, <coughs> uh, which store objects in, in, into the buckets, 
and you can have up to 10 bucks, uh, 100, 100 buckets in each account and there is an unlimited size of the uh, of the, these objects okay and object is defined like like this okay so this is the uh, bucket in which bucket you store the object and object key which you get from the moment that you created the uh, bucket and uh, uh, create the object or store the object into the into the <coughs> Amazon and look I said I said unlimited but it's only five terabytes is one object but unlimited number of objects okay you have unlimited if for one user on Amazon you have unlimited number of objects one object can be the five terabyte and you can store it into the other buckets okay and design uh, for this num this percentage of durability and this percentage of availability of your data and you can use them via HDS P or HDS yes and uh, you can you can uh, of course use also data in frame of this virtual machine which you created on, on Amazon or you can access them independently so you can store it Stuff. There are uh, another, there are another uh, type of uh, storages on Amazon, a classical file system which you can use, but I will not talk about this because I am now on the end of my presentation. So, of course, there are cloud activity reports, they are very pricing licensing. So, as I said, uh, as a, if you want to start, you need a small credit card or your organization must sign a contract with the seller. And the pricing model is different, so some of them, oh, uh, uh, some of them, like Cloud Sigma, allocate resources per month or per resources. Uh, AES and Microsoft, they offer detailed usage of, of your uh, using of, of, of the machines. So, for example, my bill uh, for, from Microsoft invoice for one month, when I did all this testing, was well, 40, 41 euro, okay, for one month. But in the moment when I stopped these machines and I didn't work so actively, so my, my bill was below 10 euro per month, okay? So, but, but it was really just for testing, so I didn't do the calculation if you are doing the, uh, a lot of calculation or if you are storing a lot of data, so your price would be increasing, okay? Rapidly, okay? So it depends. So, but uh, the, the Microsoft, they offer some type of the calculation how uh, how you can expect and how much you can expect and also the also the AWS offer you in each moment how much you will uh, be how much would be the approximately usage for this month according to the history which which you work with him with them. So you can see it is very, very coarse, so this is what I said, so you can see some current situation and the monthly monthly invoice was 15, 15 US dollars for this testing which I did on the AES. Cloud Sigma is the similar, okay. And summary? So I will repeat what I said before. So the current infrastructures are built gradually during a period of different specialists. And uh, you can create a new uh, infrastructure parallelly to existing one. And you can start to test it and uh, you can convert it into the real production after, after some time. And as I said, so it, it's uh, 
not uh, you can you cannot convert everything at once in the university. You have to really decide what what would be the step by step what you will uh, move into the clouds and in which cloud you are going on. Because uh, we have a national clouds, we don't have to use this uh, the international clouds if you want to keep the uh, fact that your data must be located in the country, okay? So for example, some uh, healthcare <coughs> systems are using the clouds which are located in the country. So because not only this big as a Microsoft or Google or the, or the other, but in every country, I don't know how in your countries, but in every country existing IT companies who, which, which offer the cloud solution. Cloud solution is technologically Solution, which is the self-service for your applications. Okay. Of course, you need the experienced IT staff who knows how to do it, or you can, of course, rent a specialist, some contractors. Uh, but it's not any time uh, the, the task for the cloud providers. Okay. Clouds, uh, uh, the, the, the cloud providers just offer you the this infrastructure and what you will run on it, it's really dependent on, on, on you. And I think, thank you for your attention. Question? Mm -hmm. If I uh, misunderstood your first presentation, you said that the USA government used the cloud around. Yeah. 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 They use public cloud for the USA government. It's not public. It's the Amazon yes. Cloud for government. Yeah. Yeah. So yes. they use the same technology, they same use the, which they offer to, to others. Mm -hmm. they, they offer for the cloud, uh, for, for the AE government applications. No more questions? Right. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, I, if I was talking about national provider, they are running all the system which is not somehow linked with, uh, with this, okay? So, the, for example, with this uh, Cloud Sigma, I would say the national provider for the system. So they are running, they have, a, they have a servers, of course, in Germany, in Switzerland, in, in the France, and in several places. But if they won't say, okay, we will offer we will, we will, we will uh, provide you the service just in the Swiss territory. So they have to select just VC, which is located in the, in the, in the Swiss. Okay. And if I am talking about the local provider, so it means that the, there exist many other companies who created in this room data center, and they offer the same technology or similar technology which, which is running the clouds. Okay? So the open stack or the open nebula is the software which is available and they can run. For example, the Cessnet, I would not say this, but Cessnet is running cloud support for the Czech academic institution. Okay? We have many, many hundred of users of clouds in, the, in, in our country from the academy. And they are running it for zero price. I mean the uh, I mean the, the final user. Because we are we are paid by the government, by the Ministry of Education, or the partly by the university. But final user will not see this. He knows that he will use these resources free of charge. And in the moment he wants to use the uh, this commercial, so they have to find the money for this. So, and this is the critical point for this: uh, how convert these big computing centers in, in frame of university 
from the from the providing service to the university on the on the level existing level to going into that because they have no extra money you know so we should change the policy of the allocation of money so our ministry and the, says that always asking for the hard money, that means the money for which I can buy some hardware, okay? And the same the university did. And, and, and they still they are still going in this in this direction. And they have no soft money for paying the services. Okay, so it's 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 a problem which yeah, and which is in our countries, okay? So, for example, in in in, uh, in the West, they, 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 I mean, especially in the Hawaii, they decided that they will not support the moving money into the hardware. They said, okay, we will create the one new organization. We will give them money, and they will provide the services from this stuff free of not free of charge, but. They they, 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 they they recalculate the, the, how much they use for each service, for each university, and they, they pay from another type of budget. So it's, it's, uh, it's a question of changing the policy. It's not the only question of how the universities are working, but also how the universities are supported by the money. Okay, now we are already over our time and we have just 15 minutes between uh, the next session which will then summarize all these workshops. Mm -hmm. uh, let's use this time. We can also ask questions during this break right now, but we can just move to the other room downstairs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.